What's up everybody? Welcome back to more podiums. I am in the garage and I've moved my whole entire rig into the garage, but I've faced some issues with doing that and it's all ran around Wi-Fi. So I thought it would be a really good idea for me to share with you guys the Wi-Fi settings and Wi-Fi changes I had to make to ensure that I stopped getting dropped from races. This also applies to anybody who's playing a game or anybody who's running on a local home network to make sure that you're running on your best Wi-Fi settings. I do not have a mesh network also, so we won't be covering that, but this is gonna get into how to make sure that your computer connects to the five gigahertz portion of your wireless every time and also so that if you have a weak signal how you could boost it that's something that we incurred while moving out to the garage we live in south florida this thing is built like a bunker uh, I, it is all concrete walls all the way around it so it's very difficult for the signals to come in here so with that being said the first thing that I did is I went out and bought a wireless extender. I am running off of an AT&T, you know, at home modem and router, and it was not giving the signal strength that I need to make it out to the garage. So first step was you need to check your signal strength. If you, your 2.4 gigahertz signal strength is gonna travel faster than your five gigahertz. So if you can connect easily to 2.4, but not so much to 5G, you might wanna look into either a extender or one of the power management settings that we're gonna go over. If that doesn't work, you might wanna look into a USB 3.0 booster or boosting your antennas. So whichever works for you if you're running a laptop or desktop. All right, now that we covered going off of the extender, we should definitely take a look at what changes we made on the rig to ensure that we're always connecting to 5G and ensure that we have the proper power going out to our system. Uh, there was two or three settings that I found that were not set by default by Windows that made the world of difference in solving this issue. It took me three or four days of troubleshooting this. I'm hoping to compress this in less than a 10 minute learning experience to help all you guys out. You guys got your extender if you need it. If you don't need it, you're getting a good enough signal strength. Or if you wanna know how to get a good signal strength, go into your command prompt and type in net sh wlan show interfaces and you want to see the signal strength there and what i've found is anything less than 40 percent or 50 percent the next few settings that we're going to do inside a device manager seem to really affect you or impact you i did end up getting a usb um, wi-fi 6 adapter please note that the higher the numbers on these adapters the more strength and signal that they're giving out the lower the numbers the less signal and strength so if you have a home internet of one gigabyte like we do and you're only doing like the 1000 ax whatever from five dollar amazon buy and it's limited to maybe 256 megabyte transfer you're going to be capped at that so you have to spend some money to get the more performant items and that's going to give you the opening up or the actual the ability to be able to get the most out of not only your extender but your internet which will result in the best latency or decrease of latency for your gaming so go in type in the net sh get this and pay the most attention to the signal that we have here and you want for that to be higher also please note the band right here if you're running 2.4 this is where you want to make the switch so let's go into device manager and make sure that you guys are always running on five gigahertz and get the 2.4 stuff out of here leave that for the stuff that doesn't need gaming doesn't need big file transfers and let's let's go over there and check that out all right so we go in we open up device manager go in if you're on windows device manager type it in boom and go down to your network adapters and you're going to probably have at least two network adapters one for ethernet once again ethernet's the best easiest way to go if you're plugged into ethernet do that if you're not you need to go to your applicable wi-fi adapter so you want something that can do Wi-Fi 5 or Wi-Fi 6. And in this case, we're doing a Wi-Fi 6. We're gonna click on properties and we're gonna go to advanced and we're going to change the following settings. First one is for the preferred band. 
prefer the highest band, six gigahertz. If you can't get six gigahertz, go to five gigahertz. So preferred band, six gigahertz. That one is gonna make sure that you're defaulting or going to the highest bandwidth that setting or that you can have. Next up, you're going to need to connect to 802.11ax if that's available. These are in order of the strongest or fastest. There is also some areas that if you do not have a good enough signal strength that you can decrease this band. AX band has the least signal strength, decrease it down to an AC, but the lower you go on this band, the slower uh, data transfers that you're going to get, which means more latency. This is what was kicking me out of games. This is the most re, uh, frustrating setting that I had and the biggest point in this video is the roaming aggressiveness is set to lowest. I am not going to search for new items to connect to. Uh, by default, it was at medium or uh, yeah, it was at medium or medium high and it just, it kept always just kicking me out of games, always going and resorting back to 2.4. It was so annoying. So roaming aggressiveness, lowest. All right, the power management setting that you guys wanna go into and adjust and make sure that it is set to the highest as long as you got this setting available to you. So I'm looking at my, my motherboard Wi-Fi adapter, which I'm not using, but I easily can and have used it, is this transmit power. Note that it's set to highest. By default, it was at like medium. So by giving and pumping out the most amount of energy, you're able to go and get the large, longest range. Um, if your device management settings look more like this, the stuff that you're gonna wanna go into and prefer is right here, 802.11ax. Uh, ABG, do not do dual band. You wanna set your items for a, uh, at a minimum, you want to set it here to five gigahertz. You just, you want to get off of 2.4 if you are gaming. Um, so you can apply these items to you. Once you go in, you're able to validate your, your changes work as expected. Make sure that you run the net sh command. I'll drop it down below and make sure that you have a solid signal strength greater than 40%. You should always be uh, resorting to band five gigahertz. And from there, I hope that that really increases your guys' speed of your machine, the speed of your file transfers, decreases your latency. And if you guys are on iRacing with me and sim racing, I hope that that prevents the packet loss and packet errors that I have been getting lately since moving into the garage. So hope this helps you guys out. Wasn't too long winded and got to the point. If this was helpful for you, please be sure to hit the subscribe button or the like button. It helps me out tremendously. Cost you nothing. It's just a left button click. So with all that being said, hope to see you guys on the grid. Peace.